Within your will, O Lord, all things are established, and there is none that can resist your will. For you have made all things, the heaven and the earth, and all that is held within the circle of heaven. You are the Lord of all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. This is the Mass for the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And this Mass is offered for the repose of the souls of all those who are buried at Saltcote Cemetery. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Let me sing to my friend the song of his love for his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug the soil, cleared it of stones, and planted choice vines in it. In the middle he built a tower. He dug a press there too. He expected it to yield grapes, but sour grapes were all that it gave. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah I ask you to judge between my vineyard and me. What could I have done for my vineyard that I have not done? I expected it to yield grapes. Why did it yield sour grapes instead? Very well. I will tell you what I am going to do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge for it to be grazed on and knock down its wall for it to be trampled on. 
I will lay it waste, unpruned, undug, overgrown by the briar and the thorn. I will command the clouds to rain no rain on it. Yes, the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah that chosen plant. He expected justice, but found bloodshed, integrity, but only a cry of distress. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. You brought a vine out of Egypt. To plant it, you drove out the nations. It stretched out its branches to the sea. To the great river, it stretched out its shoots. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Then why have you broken down its walls? It is plucked by all who pass by. It is ravaged by the boar of the forest, devoured by the beasts of the field. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. God of hosts, turn again, we implore. Look down from heaven and see. Visit this vine and protect it, the vine your right hand has planted. And the vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. And we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call upon your name. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. There is no need to worry, but if there is anything you need, pray for it, asking God for it with prayer and thanksgiving. And that peace of God, which is so much greater than we can understand, will guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, fill your minds with everything that is true, everything that is noble, everything that is good and pure, everything that we love and honour, and everything that can be thought virtuous or worthy of praise. Keep doing all the things that you learnt from me and have been taught by me and have heard or seen that I do. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I call you friends, says the Lord, because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my Father. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus sent to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Listen to another parable. There was a man, a landowner, who planted a vineyard. He fenced it round, dug a winepress in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went abroad. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his servants, thrashed one, killed another, and stoned a third. Next he sent some more servants, this time a larger number, and they dealt with them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come on, let us kill him and take over his inheritance. So they seized him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They answered, He will bring those wretches to a wretched end and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will deliver the produce to him when the season arrives. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, it was the stone rejected by the builders that became the keystone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. I tell you then that the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, or 
Yesterday, if you're watching this on Sunday, marks the celebration of a blessed, not yet raised to the altar of the saints, Dom Columba Marmion. Don Marmion was an abbot of the Benedictine order. He was born in Queen Street in Dublin in 1858 and had an Irish father and a French mother. From an early age, it is said that he was consumed with some kind of inner fire or enthusiasm for the things of God. He entered seminary at 16, and for him, faith went far beyond theories and propositions. A man's love for God is measured by his love for his neighbour. He had shown this in concrete ways. He gave all he had for a vacation to a local poor woman taken to court by a wealthy creditor for a sum she could not meet. At the same time, he developed a deep and profound spirituality and he experienced on one occasion as he returned to his study a light on God's infinity, a brief yet powerful sense of God that had a lasting impression on him. Ordained in 1881, he was sent as curate to the parish in South Dublin called Dundrum, whilst also serving as a professor at the Holy Cross Seminary in Clonliffe. In both pastoral and formation roles, he excelled, demonstrating a great strength into a, in adapting himself to others and providing spiritual comfort as well as much valued spiritual direction. But his true vocation lay in the monastic life, and he entered the Benedictine monastery of Maradzu in Belgium. Learning to live as a monk and learning to speak French was a great challenge for the young man. But it was here that his spiritual life came to full maturity and accepting with humility and obedience the discipline of the monastic rule and growing in faith, hope and charity. In one of his reflections he wrote, I felt strongly impelled to take Jesus as my one friend. I realized that in spite of my great weakness and unfaithfulness, Jesus desired to be my friend above all others. The text from the book of Proverbs, my delights are to be with the children of men, gripped me and compelled me irresistibly to respond with all my heart to this desire of Jesus. In the course of this meditation, I felt the near presence of Jesus and a great desire to do all things before his eyes. Elsewhere he would write, we are infinitely rich in Jesus Christ, and God's mercies are to our mis miseries what the ocean is to a drop of water. And no matter how great our misery, we are infinitely rich in Jesus Christ. If we unite with him, if we lean on him, if we realize constantly by a firm living faith that all the value of our prayer and of all that we do comes from his merits in us. Although he went on to become a prior and later on a great abbot of Maritzu itself, it is for insights such as this that animate his works of deep spiritual theology that many remember him. Christ, the life of the soul, published in 1917, became a spiritual classic for its rich exposition of scriptural and patristic wisdom on how Christ must be the centre of all our spiritual endeavour. We can indeed, and we must say, that Christ is the cornerstone, uh, or keystone, on which everything else is built. And this is no mere theory. Marmion's reflection is that the Lord desires to be with him as he is with us. For he, the stone rejected by proud and jealous men, represented by the unworthy servants in today's parable, willingly subjected himself to their cruelty, only to overcome it with a still greater love. He lays down his life for you and me. What will we do with that? Will we accept this gift and hold it dear? Will we accept this most amazing offer of divine adoption, of divine friendship, that his vineyard might prosper. 
as people, as his church, we need him now more than ever. The offer is there for each one of us. How will we honour it? Invite him in to stay and to heal, to mend and to restore your life and the life of the church. God of hosts, turn again, we implore. Visit this vine and protect it, the vine your right hand has planted. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine upon us and we shall be saved. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's profess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. My dear brothers and sisters, we gather to celebrate the mysteries of our redemption. Let us therefore ask Almighty God that the whole world may be watered from these springs of all blessing and life. We pray for the church, for our Pope Francis, for bishops, clergy and people everywhere, that we may be renewed in our faith, hope and love of the Lord who comes to save us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that the church may be the cornerstone of all that we do and may be a source of strength, especially for those who suffer persecution and difficulty because of their faith. We remember all those also who are living in the shadow of death and violence, those who suffer poverty and hunger and all exiles and refugees. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in the world and in our nations, we pray for reconciliation between different groups and factions in society where there is tension and discord. And we pray for all those called to serve publicly, especially at this time of the coronavirus crisis. We pray for our health services and all those who care for those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our parishes of St. Joseph's and St. Peter's. We pray for the strength of our faith and hope and love and for our outreach into the wider community, especially through St. Joseph's Care and the St. Vincent de Paul Society. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all our brothers and sisters who are sick, whether at home, in the hospital or the hospice, or in care homes and for all those who care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the souls of all the faithful departed, especially for those who were buried in Saltcoat Cemetery, those who have died recently, and those with anniversaries at about this time. May they rest in the peace of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask the prayers of Mary, our mother, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We pray for a few moments in the silence of our hearts for our own private needs and intentions.
May your mercy be beseech you, O Lord, be with your people who cry out to you, so that what they ask at your prompting, they may obtain by your ready generosity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete these, the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose disobedience we have been restored, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all those who hold him to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Cosogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, 
to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gift of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, Hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit as we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, Bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The Lord is good to those who hope in him, to the soul that seeks him. sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment mine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment mine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Amen. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae. Vita dulce do, et spes nostra salve. A te clamamos, exoles fili heve. A te suspiramos, gementes et flentes, in ac lacrimarum vale. Ea ergo, advocata nostra, illos tuos, misericordes oculos, Ad nos converte, et Jesum, benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exilium ostende. O clemens, o pia, o dulcis, Virgo Maria.